Welcome to Accounting High. Just give it away. Thanks, ChatGPT. That was one of the suggestions <laughs> it gave us that we didn't think of. Nicole, yeah, is that I thought right? of the other ones, but I did not think of that one. And I feel bad. I really should be more philanthropic. So the the last one is, yeah, give it away. Donate to charity. Set up a foundation. You could probably do something. We have a friend that started a charitable organization, Acuity Cares. So they started an entire different philanthropic nonprofit to give away all that extra cash. Check out the cash flow show. We discuss topics like getting paid on time, profitability, and managing your bottom line, payroll best practices, the best apps to use, and cash flow forecasting tools. So if you're a small business owner, your help's right around the corner. Fret not. Tune in as Scott and Nicole help you reach your goals on the Cash Flow Show. The Cash Flow Show. What up, what up, what up, what up, Nicole? Hey, Scott. you got that green on today. It's very unlike you wearing green. Green's the color of money, and today we're talking about money. We're always talking about money with the Cash Flow Show. Today is our 20th episode of the Cash Flow Show, and today we're going to talk about the opposite of having cash flow issues. We're going to tell you what to do if you got too much cash. Mo Six money, things mo problems. that you can do. Mo money, mo problems. Do you have too much cash, Nicole? I we did have a little bit of extra cash, but we just bought another duplex, so now I feel poor again. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm sitting on some cash. I always am, and I think I need some tips. I need to know what to do with my money. So we got six ways that you can spend your money or six smart things to do, different things you can do with your money. They involve saving it. They involve paying off debt. They involve investing it or even giving it away. I don't like money sitting around in my bank account. I want my money always to be working for me. And as a business owner, we have a lot of different options, right? Because we can put it back into the business or we can take it out and we can invest it in different things personally. We do have a lot of options as the sole owners of our business too. We don't have to discuss with a committee if we want to move any money around. If you're the 100% owner of your business, a lot of these options are going to be great for you. If you're not, then you're going to have to discuss with your partners. Yeah. It's a lot easier when you don't have partners. If you have investors, yeah, typically you have to leave the money in the business. Let's just go through these six, shall we? Yeah. First of all, don't go spinning it willy-nilly. Our first and foremost is save it because you might need it. What's too much money, Nicole? How do they know if they have too much cash? Yeah, so I can't remember what episode we talked about, but we talked about setting aside a cash reserve for your business. So choosing what you called a zero line. So I believe we recommended two to six months of expenses and cash reserves. And when you choose that number, typically if your business fluctuates a lot in revenue or is seasonal, then you want more in cash reserves. If you have a nice stable recurring revenue business, you probably need less in cash reserves. So figure out that number is, go back and watch that or listen to that episode. Um, I think it's like cash management strategies for S corps or something like that, but it would, it applies to any sort of pass through entity. And then once we've figured that out with that cash reserve target, is there a high interest account or money market account that you can stick that cash into or part of that cash? One thing I've seen, and I, I don't know why there's not more of these, but I was just at a conference or you were there too at the conference last week. And we met the guys from Crescent, which is a brand new startup, Neo, another Neo bank. And these Neo banks, basically what these are is they, they're backed by an FDIC insured traditional bank, but they are the platform technology online bank that sit on top of it. So you don't actually have to physically go into a bank, but they're offering like five and a half percent. I think I, I know Brex has like a 5% right now. Interest rates are really high right now on your cash. So having it sit in one of these accounts might be the safest thing you can do right now. 
but see where you can either find a business account that has high interest yield, or you can even take what I do sometimes is I'll take anything and I'll leave a minimum amount in reserves. And then anything beyond that, I take it out and I shift it to a personal account that I'm getting 5% on. It's available to access. If I get into a cash crunch in my business, I can still access it, but it's making that 5% for me. It's easier to find personal accounts that'll have those higher yield rates. Park it in a personal account and watch the money pile up. Watch your interest come deposit every month. Still not going to be that much compared to other potential ways. But another thing, and I think this one probably should go above that depending on what kind of debt you have. Paying off debt could be smart too because you could have that cash sitting there. But if that debt is credit card debt or another loan that's high yield, high interest, interest rate could probably be much more than you could potentially get in a savings account. Yeah. And if you're the only owner, I would look at not just your business debt, but also your personal debt. Because if you have debt on your business that is lower, right? A lot of us have SBA loans right now. So we got the EIDL loans that are 3.75%, which is less than what we're making on our deposit account. So we probably don't want to pay those off, right? We want to pay down our, if we have higher interest mortgages, we probably want to pay those off first. And then obviously, yeah, if we have like credit card debt, we never want to have credit card debt ideally because that's crazy high interest rates. But definitely consider what interest you're making investing money or having it sit in a high interest checking account versus the interest you're paying elsewhere. Because it may not make sense to always pay off debt. Right. So be strategic about that savings and debt. But next, our next few categories are all involve ways that you could responsibly invest some of that extra cash. So let's go with the personal route again. Things you can do personally as far as investments go. Yeah. So you can invest more in your 401k, add some more contributions to that, max it out. So Mike, my partner is, he is a general contractor. And so we own a couple of real estate investments together and he can fix up the house. So we're always looking for like rental properties. I'll take money out and invest it in real estate. If you have a spouse who's a real estate professional, that's one of the best ways that you can reduce your tax taxes, right? If you have somebody that's a real estate professional, that means they can write off their depreciation against your business income. So I think it was Paul and I were joking that we should start a dating app where business owners get match with real estate professionals so they can utilize (laughs) their depreciation (laughs) right off. Find somebody that's like a handyman or a Mr. Fix-It that can be your professional. Because we would know more than I do, but you have to qualify as a real estate professional. It's hard to do. So you have to be like a real estate agent or in construction. It has to be your full-time job or just meet a certain amount of hours that you work in it. Right. You and I can't write off real estate losses for if I own a rental property. Most of the time, at least in California, it's all, we're basically breaking even. We're not cash flowing. We're making our money on appreciation. So on paper, because we have to, depreci- by the time you add in depreciation, we're making losses on our properties, but I can't write that off because I'm not a real estate professional. Your losses are limited. And yes, losses are limited. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's one option. Real estate comes with having to take care of it though. So <laughs> I wouldn't do it if it was just me. That's for sure. Do you own any real estate yeah. outside of your house? Just in Mexico. We had a few opportunities to own real estate and I just don't like keeping up with stuff like that. Repairs and like that. This did seem like a business I wanted to get into. I would never, I cannot be bothered. Yeah. It might take care of all that. Okay. So other places we can put our money, obviously we could put it in the stock market. One thing that I know you and I have done, we have peers that have done are to invest in applications that we actually use in our businesses, right? We're friends with a lot of app developers. We go to a lot of conferences. We meet these people, we use their product. And then when they're raising rounds, we're always looking for opportunities for investing in tools we know that we like to use and will be successful. So that's an option is to do venture capital investments. Obviously that comes with risk. So if you're doing that, assume that you're never going to see it again and that you're okay if you never see it again. And then another way to get a low risk way to invest your money, but get a little bit higher returns is hard money lending. 
If you search like hard money lending in your area, you'll probably find firms that do this. So basically what they do is they put together a portfolio of real estate developments or people who want to flip a house and they lend money at a high interest rate to these people. Like Mike's done it before for his flips. So they might lend to him for 13, 16%. And then they pull a portfolio of these together and then they go get money from individuals like you and me and then pay us like 8%. You can look into those options. They're pretty safe because it's real estate. And if something happens, they'll take over the the asset. This is all personal stuff though, that you can do personally. This would require taking the money out of the business and investing in any of these options. But the next one would be investing into your business. Yep. So we're always investing back in your business is probably going to be the highest return that you can put your money. If I think trusting in yourself always gets you a better return rather than trying to give it to somebody else to make money on your money. I had a client that was cash flowed like $3 million in one year and grew really quickly. He's like, okay, what do I do with all this money? And so what he ended up doing was opening up two new locations. And there's risk in that because those two new locations may not do as well as the initial ones. His downside was he could lose a million dollars. He had $3 million sitting in the bank. He could lose a million. But the upside is he can make eight, right? So being able to like do the calculation and understand what the ROI is and something like that is really important. So expanding into new locations might be an option. Improving processes. So investing in technology, buying a new piece of equipment that's more efficient, How can you invest now in order to be more efficient in the long term? Investing in customer experience, I think that's a big one. And what happens over time as you get more competitors coming into your space, all of a sudden you're not differentiated anymore. So don't get lazy. Invest in customer experience. You might also invest in employee training, team building, improving your culture, upgrading employee benefits. You might invest in new marketing strategies or do a rebrand, right? Those are all ways that you can invest the money back into your business. Yeah. I think that might be one of the top options here. If you have money in the business and you're looking to grow or you're looking to level up your experience with the customers and possibly charge higher prices, that's where this path will lead you there. And there's other ways to invest too. Let's say you're in an office and you're paying rent. And that office goes up for sale. Yeah. So this is a common one. It's very common for someone that's leasing an office building to buy the building. This could be a good investment. And actually, let's say if you didn't have cash, there's a lot of SBA loans you can get where you can put very little down for buying office buildings for your own business. But I actually had a client that they sold their business and they owned the building. And the CFO that that we work with he ne- was very hard on negotiating during the sales process. The acquirer of the business is now taking over that lease. They're now going to be the tenant. And they didn't really seem to pay much attention to that. And they were more focused on, the buyer was more focused on like the sales price. And actually the my client who sold the business is now making more money off of the monthly rent payments because he owns the building free and clear than he did on the sale of the business. So that can be a good strategy is when you go to sell, you hold on to, you have this new tenant, right? And then you're making money off the the building. So it could be a good investment. He's making more money doing that than with the business. He's probably working less. Yeah. The other thing to be aware of there though, is make sure you put office building in a different entity usually, right? Scotty, we don't want to put that we don't want to put real estate until next corporate. Go without going. saying, yeah, it happens. <laughs> it happens all lot. the time. We have so many clients. Yes, it does. We have clients come to us, and their real estate is in the business, but the title is in their name and different. There's just be very mindful because the purchaser doesn't really care a lot about these things, or the seller, or even the yeah. real estate agents. They're not mindful of this. So see somebody that knows what they're doing, an attorney, an accountant to make sure you get it titled correctly too, because that could be a big mess later. We've had somebody pay gains on a property because they had it in the S-Corp by accident. And then when they took it out, we had to step up the basis. It was a mess. I just remember that from my tax days. It was always like, never put real estate in an S-Corp, but it happened all the time. The other thing to think about too, is I've seen this before, is when you're thinking about 
I know this isn't the topic of this episode, but when you're, if you do own real estate and you're not paying yourself rent through the business, consider that when you're thinking about your margins, right? Because you could look a lot more profitable than you are, but that's only because you're not paying yourself rent through the business. So just be aware of that. If you go to sell your business and then start adding things back, that's one thing they're going to add back and say, well, you're technically should be paying rent. Now all of a sudden you're, but I just went down 10%. So yeah, it's one of those discretionary things that we've talked about on the other episode there. Okay. Yeah. But again, there's a lot of benefits to doing this. I had one of my employees buy the building we were in and in less than four years, it appreciated almost, it, it went up by $200,000 in three and a half years. He made out like a bandit when we sold it. Can want to keep it and real estate went up a lot depending on the area you're in it could be a growing area yeah, yeah. from a tax perspective is there any advantage to that because you have to you're writing it off but then you're also recording it as income are there any tax advantages to owning it what would the income when you sell it or is the rent or what's the no like a month like just when you own it and you're occupying it and you're running your business in it so the business would be paying rent to the um, it's a wash. You, if you think about it, so if we're going to get technical revenue from rentals is passive. So it's not going to get hit with any extra self-employment tax or any other tax like that. And so you, what you're doing is reducing any income that's subject to other taxes like employment taxes. Anytime you can mm. put money in a passive vehicle, so that's why we talk about S-Corps because that's an opportunity for most of your income to be passive or not subject to self-employment tax. Same with rentals. So you're deferring some of that money to put it in. So typically a self-employed individual that is not an S-corp, if they're paying money into rent, that's a big chunk of their income that is now lo no longer subject to that. Plus you also get the write-offs. We were just saying earlier with rental property, you may be limited in your losses, but you're still getting to the point where you could have a loss. So you're getting to write off all those other expenses associated with the building that you may not have. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it sounds like having a tax accountant who can strategize because that rent payment could be subjective. Like you can mess around with that. Mm -hmm. You want to maximize the fair market value there and charge yourself as much as you can. So a lot of okay. that stuff is set up on the front end to make sure that you're saving on the taxes at the end of the year. So talk to your tax accountant about that. But that's a, that's probably one of the smartest things you can do. That's why we saved it for last. We saved the best number six for last invest in real estate. For your business, if you're already paying rent, you may as well just own it. If you Wait, there's the one more. There's one more. I forget. I forget. That's <laughs> This is number six. And this is just give it away. Thanks, chat GPT. That was one of the suggestions <laughs> it gave us that we didn't think of. Nicole, yeah, is that I thought right? of the other ones, but I did not think of that one. And I feel bad. I really should be more philanthropic. So the, the last one is, yeah, give it away. Donate to charity. Set up a foundation. You could probably do something. We have a friend that started a charitable organization, Acuity Cares. So they started an entire different philanthropic nonprofit to give away all that extra cash. That's right. I remember that. And didn't you, weren't you wanting to do some sort of program too at Pageant? Oh, of course. I always have these visions of grand gestures, but it never materialized. Then other things happened and I started losing money. It was like we had excess and I was ready to start giving it away. And then the, the pendulum swung the other direction. So yeah. I think you want to be, but also you want to look at things that are near and dear to you, things that matter to you as a person, things that you care about, because this doesn't necessarily have to be attached to the business or what you guys do as a business, but they could all blend together too, or it could be something yeah. that's just very close to your heart. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Sponsor know, like, a local T-ball team. Uh, yeah. That's <laughs> any kind of local organizations. Yeah. So B Corp or, I know that's something that people talk about as well. Like any type of organization. Yeah, but that's not really, that's still an a organization that's not like this. When you're giving money away, there's still tax benefits to that too. If you're giving away charitable contributions, make sure you get those receipts because you do get a tax deduction, scholarship fund. Or you can do give it away to your employees, pay out mm -hmm. bonuses. 
Yeah, but I think that's investing back in your business. If you're paying your people more, then you're probably going to get more out of them. And that's just like paying for higher cost, right? So more expensive people means you're going to have better people that, and you're paying them more. You're going to get better customer service out of that. So that's investing back in your business. I think this last one is also just a form of social responsibility, doing things just out of the kindness of your heart. So if there's still money left over at this point, you probably don't have cash flow issues and you're not listening to this show because you've got <laughs> yeah. enough money to be giving it all away, <laughs> then there's other avenues and things that you can do there. I think this is good. I'm glad you did pick t- episode 20 to do this because it's opposite of everything that we are talking about. And in mind, when you're thinking about cash flow issues, you're not thinking about the opposite of cash flow issues is having too much of it, which is still an issue. Yeah. It's not even necessarily having too much. And you can go in ebbs and flows, right? Where you might have a lot of cash. And again, you're always just trying to figure out how do I optimize my cash? And when you have a business, there's a certain ROI that you get from running a business. And you need to think of your business as an investment, just like you would with any of these other things. You're not drowning in cash flow like Scrooge McDuck and (laughs) in his gold coins. Wouldn't that hurt if you dove into a vat of gold coins? Oh, yes. You're not going to just dive in Scrooge, but yeah. Cool. Any calls to action for our students, for our listeners? Yeah. Make sure to leave us a review. We'd really appreciate that. It motivates us to keep recording. Follow us on LinkedIn. If you need accounting help, outsourced accounting help, momentumaccounting.com. If you need tax help, pageantnc.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, Nicole McKenzie, or Scotty on LinkedIn as well. Scotty Scarano. I have a little OKR there too. Thanks, homies. Peace out. See ya. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're drowning in cash flow issues. You run a business, but feel like it's running you. Customers won't pay. But you got bills due. It appears you won't have enough for payroll coming up soon. It seems like you're running nowhere fast. You work hard, but never able to withdraw cash from the business. You get more customers, hire more employees, but still take home hardly anything. You feel like you're on a hamster wheel, frustrated because the battle's always uphill. Even though you got a bookkeeper on your team, they send you reports, but you don't really know what they mean. Your CPA doesn't understand a thing about your business. At least that's how it seems. But if you want to get above water and grow, check out the Cash Flow Show. This is the Cash Flow Show, where we help the small business gain momentum and become profitable. This is the Cash Flow Show. Listen. Like getting paid on time, profitability, and managing your bottom line, payroll best practices, the best apps to use, and cash flow forecasting tools. So if you're a small business owner, your help's right around the corner. Fret not, tune in as Scott and Nicole help you reach your goals on the Cash Flow Show. The Cash Flow Show, where we help the small business gain momentum and become profitable. Take you far. Can-